Amen. Amen. Well, by a show of hands, how many here today have had your life go exactly as you have always planned? Your life, when you set out your career, your life, your journey, your path, your life, the way you had always planned it, the way you had always predicted it, the way you had always envisioned it, it's gone exactly as planned. Raise your hand nice and high, right? <laughs> not one, like, he's like, no, not me. Isn't it interesting? Not one person in the entire place, and I'm trusting online, not one of us, the path has gone the way we predicted. I, I, it's interesting season for us because my wife just turned 29 a couple days ago, and uh, I turned 34 in, on Tuesday. <laughs> That's good. Well placed. Um, the church, 15 years. And so, you, you know, as a human, you start thinking, and young people, let me just tell you, as you get older, you start reflecting more. And it's like, not in a million years would I have ever guessed that I would be standing on this stage with a microphone in my hand, talking about Jesus, sharing God's word. I was anything but that. Those of you that know me old school, some people from high school, like, dude, never in a million years. Raised here in Omaha. Parents got divorced when I was seven. Wet the bed for a couple years. Went through a lot of tragedy, chaos. Didn't really know who I was, had no identity. My identity was connected to what I did, like many of us. Went to Iowa State University, played football and baseball. Went to the NFL, somehow, some way. I have no idea, make it. And I make it, and I'm thinking I'm living my dream. The only reason God brought me there is to bring me to a church called Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, to meet my wife and to really set me on the trajectory that I'm at right now, which is super meaningful. Big deal, NFL. It's a pig skin, tight guy, you know, guys with tight pants and pads. And, you know. Here I am today on this path, this journey that I would never would have predicted. How about you? And through the journey, there's been ups and downs, man. There's been, there's been days where I wanted to tap, if I'm really honest with you. There's been days, there's been seasons where I didn't feel like I could ever get through it. This message is for those of us in here that are on the journey, you're on the path, and you don't think that you can go another day. And you're like, no, man, my life's, my life's good. Well, put this in your pocket for the days and the seasons that, that you will get to. Because believe me, mark my words, someone, there's gonna be a tragedy in your life. There's gonna be a death in the family. There's gonna be something chaotic that happens, and your back is a is gonna be against the wall, the pressure's gonna be there, it's gonna be mounting, and you're gonna, you're gonna be like, dude, I have no way out. And then just at the right time, God is gonna provide an out at just the right time, proving who he is. That's what this message is all about. I got my amen corner over here, so I'm just gonna speak right over here. And y'all can start waking up in a minute as I'm preaching here. It, 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 it's like this interesting thing that I've been studying is... I want life to be predictable, to be chill, to be peaceful, to kind of go steady. But the fact of the matter is that's not the world we live in. The fact of the matter is God creates us like, and puts us on this like spinning planet, you know, that's just exactly, you know, the distance away from the sun that it needs to be so it doesn't burn up or doesn't like ice over, you know, like there's, he throws us on here, he gives us free will. We, we, we go against him. It creates all kinds of chaos. And we live in this life, on, and we walk this journey out. If, if you're note-taking, you can write it down, number one. And yes, we will get into the text. But I needed to set it up, and I need to get you all in here because we're all on this path together. And, and number one, let me, let me just show you. The psalmist is gonna tell you. You read it this week. <laughs> number one, your path is guaranteed. You ready for this? To be painful and problematic, painful and problematic. And all the church said, amen. Yes, can't wait. 
painful. I love pain. How many weirdos actually like pain, though? Yeah, right? Raise your hand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I saw you over there. <laughs> Psalm 77.1. Watch what he says. I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. You ever been in a season where you're shouting at God? Like, how on earth did I get here? Why am I in this predicament? Why did they leave again? Why, why, why did they say one thing, but they did another? God, why didn't you show up? And, and you just lose your mind, and you begin shouting at God. There's something deep in your heart that you're like, man, I can't get right. Why aren't you here? And it's painful, and it's problematic, and it's tragic. God, would you just listen to me? Can you just stop like spinning the cosmos and just pay attention to me for a second? God, I need you right now. The psalmist says in verse two, when I was in deep trouble, <laughs> when I was in deep trouble, I was in deep trouble on the way here. I was driving my little convertible and it's like icy out. And I forgot for a second that it was icy and the light was green. So I was trying to like make the green light. You know what I'm talking about? And then I was like, oh, snap. And I went right through that thing and started being like, nee, nee, nee. it's like Duke's a hazard, all cool. Like, <laughs> I was like, God, I need your help. I need to preach this message. I need to get to church. It's cool because then <laughs> I got through. There was a plow that just happened to be like right in front of me. Isn't it interesting? Like right at the right time. Sometimes when you're like, I don't know how this is going to work out. God just provides the plow right there and just moves stuff out of your way. No. Okay. I'm the only one that got the plow today. God's raining down on me. All night long, I prayed. My hands lifted towards heaven, but my soul was not comforted. You ever been there like where you're, you're crying out to God, you're pouring out your heart, you're in a wild circumstance, and, and for whatever reason, it just seems that God's silent. Wouldn't it be great if you just talked to God and every single time he's like, oh yeah, by the way, yeah, don't worry about it. I know this journey is going to be wild, but I'm, you know, here's what's going to happen. Um, you're going to have kids at this age, and then this is going to happen, and then this is going to happen. And he, and he just gives you the, everything wouldn't that be great? Yes, we, yes and no, right? Crying out, and he's hearing nothing. Nothing. In fact, verse three, I think of God, and I moan. Everybody just give me your best moan real quick. Mm. That was kind of weak, but I moan. I don't even know how to moan, so that was my best. I moan. But this hit me right here. I want you to underline this in your Bible real quick. I, I moan, what does it say? Overwhelmed with longing for his help. Overwhelmed. Completely overwhelmed. I, I, God, I'm at a position, I'm at a place on the path that there's nothing I can do to get out of it. There's, I have no answers. I've shouted out to you. I still feel like you're silent. And I got some problems. I wrote in my notes, we want life to be peaceful, yet most often it's full of problems. And it's a problem. Sometimes it's our own dumb choices. Isn't it interesting? Like how God gives you like free will. Where are my, where are my, my older saints at real quick? Come on, we've, we've lived a little bit. We made some, just done some dumb stuff. And then we live in the consequences of the dumb choices. That's some of us. Some of us, man, you're like really, really good. And you've done things so well. You've honored God. You've pursued him. And you're so sweet and kind. And still, though, you live in a sin-saturated world. So guess what? You also will have problems. Jesus guaranteed it. What did he say? In this world, you, you will have trials. Not you might, you will, Aubrey, I'm sorry to tell you, you will have, I don't know why I'm telling you, you're a sweet lady, you're just awesome, you love Jesus, but guess what? A lot of knuckleheads in this world that go outside of God's will, sin enters, and chaos will go your way. Your path is gonna be painful. Amen. And all the church said. Amen. I ran into a guy, uh, he just lives right over here at the gym. He goes, he goes I, I was squatting, he, I looked at him, 
And you know, he's a seasoned saint and he comes over. He's like, I saw it on his face. I was like, bro, what's wrong with homie? He's like, dude, my first set, I think I just blew out my shoulder. I'm like, ah, oh, Dennis, I'm, man, I just felt so bad. I'm like, hold on, let me finish this set. And I just went and just started praying like over and like healing over his shoulder. You know, he's like, oh, okay, all right. He just walked away. I was just thinking like, it's just problems. R- rotator cuff blowing out or ruined marriages. Like it's just, it's all painful. Whether it's a rotator cuff or, or you name it, like it's painful. I, I was uh, visiting the hospital with one of my friends who went through a really tough thing and I'll spare you the details. The basics were he, he, didn't, he almost didn't make it. If it wasn't for a miraculous and timely application of a tourniquet, he would have lost his life. And I showed up to this hospital room and I was actually kind of, I was kind of shocked how he had a smile on his face and just honoring God through it. And he, and it's just so wild. But as we were there, I was praying and, and I felt God give this specific word about when we walk through painful seasons on our path, it's actually, there's a lot of purpose in it. And the hardest season of his life could actually be the best season of his life. And I gave us this word, his, this word. it's from 2 Corinthians 1, and I wanna give it to you if you're in a season like this. And here, the word was this, sometimes when we're overwhelmed, it's actually an opportunity. Let me say it again. When we're overwhelmed, it's actually an opportunity. In 2 Corinthians 1, Paul the apostle shares this idea. And those of you that are new to the Bible, the apostle Paul was like this OG gangster pastor dude that would go all over the place and start churches. And he would run into a lot of persecution, a lot of trouble. They hated him. And a lot of times there were like attempts on his life. Imagine if someone comes in, you know, and they're just throwing stones at me right now, which... I've had that happen with their eyes, but not necessarily their hands. But someone, so Paul would go these places. One time he was in this place and literally they took stones up to kill him and they were drilling him and he, he just getting pelted with these stones and he, he's, he's down, like just straight down. And the people thought they had killed him. They drug him like outside the city and they bounced and somehow miraculously, Paul like, can you imagine, he just, he just like got KO'd by Mike Tyson. He like somehow gets back up, walks back into the city, starts preaching the gospel again. Like this dude is raw. <laughs> and here's what he says. He's writing to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 1. Can you put that on the screen again? So good. It says we were crushed. <laughs> and, and what church? And overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. I looked at my friend, I'm like, that's exactly where you're at. In fact, we expected to die. And he was worshiping Jesus as he was thinking he was dying. But as a result, watch this, watch this. We stopped relying on ourselves. Oh, this is so good. You gotta stay here. And learn to rely only on God who raises the dead. Let me just say this to someone in here right now. You are in such a painful season, but can I just tell you, it very well could be the most purposeful season of your entire life because you've been trying to drive the car of your own life on this path on your own strength for this many years. And guess what? You've, you've actually been pretty successful, but then something happens and you're like, oh my goodness, dude, this car is going to crash. I got to do something different. Guess what? It's the perfect time. It is the perfect time. And and a lot of times it's God ordained, man. It's God ordained. Why? What why did why was why did God create you? Why did He create me? Let's get down to the simplicity of Christianity. He created you for a love relationship with Him. Wait, what's not? Attend church, give, open the door for the old lady. Yeah, all that's great. He created you and I for a relationship. That's it. Sometimes pain has purpose, and it's to draw us back to the Father and connect back with him again. I, I used to see this all the time when my kids were little. Our kids, by the way, are 21 years old. We have twin boys. It's, it's hard to imagine they're already 21. 
So proud of each of them, most of the time. Um, <laughs> and they, man, they were so cool. When they were little, Blaze was four pounds, six ounces when he came out of the womb. And Zion, 5'15", and they were just the little snuggly, like little, just the best dudes. And we're, we're my parents of newborns, by the way. Anybody like, isn't it the best? Or you guys remember, we're my parents. You remember like just to snuggle them and feed them and burp them, you know? I, it's one of my favorite things. And then they hit this age, like toddler stage. Toddlers, parents of toddlers right here, right? I'm gonna pray to the house. Somebody I love, I love, <laughs> pray in tongues over you guys. Um, it was cool though, because in those seasons, I got a good picture of this whole idea of when problems and pain come in, it actually forces us to the father's arms. They'd be like, they'd be like running around playing with their toys, distracted in life. <laughs> and then, you know, something would happen, you know, Blaze would take a truck and just drill Zion with it or something, and Zion would come running, and he'd be like, ah, you know, like, dad, and, I, and he'd, and he'd give me the biggest hug, man. It was the best. It, and as a dad, I'm like, that's, I live for that. Ah. And then I, you know, pray for it. And then he'd just run away again and just take off. And I feel like that's human sometimes, isn't it? Like, I'm all distracted doing my own thing on Twitter, on social media. Ah, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm all chaotic. And then something happens and we hit rock bottom and we go through this painful, gnarly thing. What does it do? It brings us right back to the heart of the Father. So sometimes, when we're overwhelmed, it actually is, it actually, it really is. Can, someone needs to grasp it. It really is. You're like, I'm trying to get out of it. I'm trying to do whatever. Listen, sometimes it's just beautiful to go, God, I don't understand it. I embrace it. I'm overwhelmed. It forces us not to rely on our own strength, to rely on God alone. Doesn't matter where you're at right now. He can do it. On the path, it's gonna be painful. Hallelujah. It's gonna be problematic. Number two, it's gonna be, I like this word, precarious and perplexing. Precarious, I hope I'm saying that right, and perplexing. Verse four, Psalm 77, verse four, you don't let me sleep. I'm too distressed even to pray. Anybody ever gone through sleepless nights in your life where you're like, you're like, please, can I just get some rest? And your mind just keeps on going. I'm in one of those seasons right now. There's someone in our household that wakes up really, really early and I'm trying to still sleep. And it's like, uh, pray for her, by the way, pray for, pray for her to get more rest. And it's like, ah, and, and I'm just, anybody been there? Like you have a million things. And, and by the way, pro tip, someone, someone told me this, our facilities director, he said this. Next time you're up at three and you can't get back to sleep, quit trying to force it and just start praying for people. That's, your, that's, that's some homework. Just start praying for someone at school, at work, someone else going through something. Put them on a list. I challenge you, on your notes, on your app. Where are my iPhone people real quick, okay? Where's my other people? Was that droids? Whatnot? Okay. I don't know, is that what it's, I, but it's, Write it down, like literally write down the people, take it out and just start praying for people. What's interesting, you can, you can actually steward that time instead of getting mad at your spouse, you can just start praying for people and leverage it. I don't know why I just told you that, but I did. So you don't let me sleep, I'm too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days, long since ended. Isn't it interesting how we do that as humans? Like, I'm in this predicament, in this perplexing moment. It's precarious, it's dangerous. I just wanna get back to where it used to be. When my nights were filled with joyful songs, I search my soul and ponder the difference now. I'm perplexed. It's a precarious position. I, I said this in my notes, we, we want the path to be predictable, but most often it's precarious. We want it to be predictable. But I'm gonna prove it real quick that us as humans, even though we say we like predictability, we actually don't. Here it is. We're my movie people, Netflix bingers, people watch movies, okay? You're like, no, not in church, okay? So <laughs> let me ask you this. When you watch a movie that you, within the first five minutes, you already know how it's gonna go, how many shut it off and you, and you just shut it down? 
Huh? Why? Because we want, we, we want to try to figure it out. Oh, what's going to happen next? My wife makes fun of me all the time. I'm the most predictable person in the world. Like, I eat the same thing. She's like, dude, like, spice it up a bit, right? It's like, we, no, we, we don't want predictable. We, we want to actually try to figure it out. But then we say, no, it's too much. Well, which one is it? The, the word precarious, by the way, I got Here it is, ready? This is your season right now. Not securely held or in position, watch this, dangerously likely to fall or collapse. You're like, that sounds like my financial like, planning right now. It's on the danger of collapsing. My seasoned saints, your 401k worked hard for years. You put it in the wrong set of stocks, and now you're like, oh! Precarious, perplexing. It's, it's keeping you up at night. It's chaotic. And the psalmist asked these questions. These are real questions. And, and I love, one of the main things I love about this church is we just go right through the Bible, and, and we can get raw and real. I love the psalmist. Look what he says. Verse 7. Look at the questions that he asked God. He's raw enough to ask God. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never be kind to me? Like, like is the favor faucet of God just gone? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promises permanently failed? Has God, watch this, forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? Maybe a parent walked out on you and you're connecting that with God in these days and you're feeling like God just slammed the door. He, he ends in verse 10, this section, he says, this is real, man, and this is where you might be talking to God. This is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. Done. I'm wondering if there's anybody in church that you've been in a season like this and you're like, dude, I... I'm done. It's, it's completely over. God has left me. His hand of grace is, is I've blown it too bad. There's nothing that I can do. He, it, I'm not going to be able to recover. I'm perplexed. I'm up at night. I'm overwhelmed. It's a precarious, it's a tricky position. But God, could it be that in God's sovereign plan, he put it all together to bring you to this place where you finally only rely on him. Will you trust him? What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He'll make it straight. In, in, in time, well, here's a wild thing. You, you grow, it's like everybody wants to grow by faith, but I don't want to go with problems. He's like, man, the very thing that I've created, the circumstance that you're in right now is to show off my glory that I'll come and bring a path that no one knew about. That no one knew about. Go all the way down to verse 19. Psalm 77, verse 19. I love this. Watch this. <laughs> Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway, here it is, this is the title of the message, jot it down, that no one knew was there. So, so think about this, the psalmist is writing, he's like overwhelmed, he's like, dude, I'm done, there's, God left me, there's there, nothing, I'm completely over, and then he pauses, it's actually back in verse 11, he starts considering the things that God did in his life and the Israelites, the Jews' life, for generations. And he comes back to this time where the Jews crossed through the Red Sea. And I just want to just pause real quick and just share the story. Some of in here, you're new to the Bible. God's chosen people, the Jews, were in bondage, in slavery in Egypt for four, over 400 years, being whipped, beaten, they cried out, God, will you, will you save us? And God miraculously, he sends Moses to lead his people out of slavery. They're, out of, they're, they're on their way to the promised land, and God puts them, watch this, he puts them in the predicament 
that it looks like it's the death sentence. You remember the story. They, they're moving towards the promised land, but they come up against a, a sea, the Red Sea. So they got the Red Sea in front of them. How the heck am I going to get to the other side? And guess what? Now I have Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and all his minions, all his chariots and charioteers, all the warriors are coming on this side. So now, guess what? God sovereignly, he's the one that hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he moved them in. So I got Pharaoh on one side. I got a sea on the other side. I'm in a scenario of impossibility. What would you do right there? You know what the Israelites did? <laughs> they complained to Moses. Couldn't you just left us back in Egypt so we could have died there? They were freaking out. Chaotic in the past. Oh, what are you doing? They're yelling at God. They're yelling at the leader. I can't believe this. And God tells, Mo, tells Moses, hey, tell the, tell, the, tell the homies, just relax. Stay calm. It's like easy for you to say. I think it's in verse 14. Can you bring that up? I think it's Exodus 14, 14. Go back and study this, by the way. Study Exodus 14 and, 14 and tie it with Psalm 77. Yeah, this is good. So Moses told the, told the people, hey, man, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. There's a path you haven't seen. The Egyptians you see today, they're never going to be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Maybe that's a word that you needed to receive today. You're freaking out on your finances, your marriage. Like, what's next? You have decisions to make. Maybe, maybe the Lord would just say to you, Yo, God is gonna provide, just stay calm. Sure enough, what, what happens? You guys know the rest of the story. <laughs> God's like, hey, watch this. And this wind happens, and the Israelites are like, yo, what up? You start flowing through there. And just when Pharaoh and the rest of the homies go into the sea to try to take them out, the Israelites just get to the other side and the sea kills the entire Egyptian army. <laughs> Here was their problem. They're in a predicament. They're like, how are we gonna get out of this? But number three, if you're a note taker about the path that you and I are on, it's powerful and providential because just at the right time, when he's right there, when the whole entire squad is right there, you might be right there right now. Do you know in the Bible, Pharaoh is a picture of Satan. The army is like a picture of the demonic, and now they're pressing in on one side. Your back is against the wall. You're in this precarious position, but guess what? The God of power, the God who has a path, he's going to open it at just the right time. And that's what the verse says, Psalm 77. Can you bring it up? I want to say it's verse 19 or maybe 21. Here's the key to the whole study. There's a path. There's a path that no one knew was there. It's verse 19. Your road led through the sea. I don't want to go through it. Too bad. You're going. Your pathway through the mighty waters. A pathway. Here it is. Underline. Star this in your Bible. A pathway no one knew was there. No one knew it. At right the right time, he parts it and they go through it. And I'll just give you a practical story and then we'll let you go to brunch. Who's hungry up in here, by the way? I need a pathway to La Peep right now. That's what I, that's what I need. The Lord's going to provide. <laughs> when we first started the church, there were, we knew we had a call to come back that's good, right there. We knew we were supposed to leave Fort Lauderdale February 2008 to come back here, start this church. We knew we're called. We didn't know what the path was going to look like. How? Where are we going to work? Where are we going to live? How, how am I going to pay for my family, my beautiful wife, and, and six-year-old twin boys? But we knew we had to go. We knew we were called. And so we had this little condo in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 
and we packed it up not knowing where, what the path was gonna be. And I'm telling you, church, listen to how he provides at the right time. We shut the moving van. I get into my little V-dub Jetta. I, see, I notice on my flip phone there's like a message on it. The message, I, I get it, the voicemail is my buddy back here. He knew that we were coming back. He's like, hey, I heard you guys were moving back to start the church. He's a home builder. He's like, hey, um, I just finished some townhouses, brand new townhouses. I wanna make sure you and your family have a place to stay as you get the church started. <laughs> Guess what? That's a pathway no one knew about. He provided. And all throughout the journey, listen, in your life, in my life, in the church's life, our back's been against the wall several times throughout the journey. And I believe he put us there so he could show off and prove who he is. I got you, this is my church. I will show my glory when you're in a pickle and you're in a predicament. My power, my providence will prevail. He, he's done it. The last thing is, this, this building you're in right now, isn't it nice, by the way? Isn't it, isn't it cool? Like, God's just given us a beautiful living room. So cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah. Do you know that um, in God's sovereignty, he had us build it during the pandemic in 2020? Great timing. Thanks, God. And it's interesting, you know, that the way this whole thing works, you know, everybody's coming by faith and sacrifice. And, but man, some, some right in the middle of the predicament financially, they're like, man, there's nothing we can do. And I remember after preaching at God's garage, anybody been at God's garage? Those were the days. And I remember being kind of overwhelmed and like, I don't know how we're gonna finish this building. And there was dirt all over where you guys are sitting and this was all concrete. And I came uh, up here, and I just remember crying out to God. I was, I was like, I don't know how we're going to do this. I felt just like Moses and the people. I was like, right here. I was like, oh, ah, like, how are we going to do this? Did I do the wrong thing? What did I do? And so I just got on my face before God. I'm crying out. I'm like, I can't do it. He's like, perfect. I remember, this is a true story. I remember looking over. I got up, and there was a white cup right over there that one of the construction guys left, it said, dream it and do it. <laughs> dream it and do it. And wouldn't you know, miraculously, I wish I could tell you the whole story, God provided it in a miraculous way financially. And guess what? We made it into this building and we got in in 2020 and soul after soul has been saved for the glory of God. And it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I just wanted to share that because, man, I don't know where you're at. Maybe you're not building a church building. Maybe, maybe you're just in this place where you feel the enemy squeeze in here and there's no way out. Can I just say, man, just, just cry out to God. Let him, let him work. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. God, thank you for this church. Thank you for stretching our faith when we really <laughs> didn't feel like it, and yet you, you forced us to this place where we stop relying on ourselves and we rely on you. You're faithful, God. And I'm just speaking on behalf of hundreds, thousands of us that are just saying, thank you, God, that you didn't give up on us. Thank you that even though we were freaking out right in the middle, you still provided the path that no one knew about. And I pray today, God, just a, a growth in us in humility of trust. We say yes, display your glory through us continually, continually. I don't care how hard it gets, how painful, how pressure packed. I pray that you would show yourself faithful, glorify yourself through our predicament. We, we, we invite you and we say yes, do it. For your glory in Jesus' name.